Hello scrappers and planet lovers, Tin Man here with another video. So as you can see behind me, I have two microwaves. Found them both on garbage day and unfortunately they don't work. S microwaves are a great scrappable material. They've got lots of steel and copper and brass and aluminum. And I actually have individual videos showing you how to take apart uh, these models. The white one is a more modern model. The brown one is uh, older and both have a lot of good scrap of material. However, they are also dangerous. So please make sure you um, are cautious when you are taking these apart. They both, all microwaves actually can hold a deadly charge uh, and that's because of the capacitor inside of it. So please be very careful before you take one of these apart. Um, my first rule, and I cannot caution enough, before I tackle any microwave, I will let it sit for a week, a week and a half, um, to hopefully lower the charge that is in here, um, and then I will further uh, discharge it safely. So if you're interested in those videos, please go check th those out. Um, but what I've done today is, I wanted to look at the question, do older microwaves have more copper inside of them? And if so, how much more? We find as scrappers, a lot of the newer models have become more replaced with aluminum wire instead of copper because it is cheaper to use. Um, it is just as conductive. Um, so what I've actually done in this video is I've taken apart all the pieces that have copper and I've weighed them to answer that question. Before I begin, I do want to say currently the copper prices right now, I just called about 10 minutes ago, uh, a scrapyard in London, Ontario, currently for a hundred pounds or more of bare bright copper is going for $4.40 Canadian. Number one copper is going for $4.22 Canadian. And number two copper is going for $4.13 Canadian. So all of the copper that you see in front of you is going to be classified as number two copper. Uh, but for $4.13, that is an amazing price. Okay, for this experiment, I have not factored in any of the insulated copper wire. Okay, so I've just concentrated on the copper. And what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna start with the white model, the newer model. I'm gonna show you where all the copper is. I'm gonna show you the weight, and I'm going to show you the difference in price. So here we go. The first thing, as I said, um, unfortunately, back in the day, and actually even now, transformers are one of the best places to get copper. Um, they are heavy. This actually has its own category at the scrapyard. This is, would be, if I took this in as is, I would get transformer weight uh, and price. It is currently um, 16 cents a pound. This is 11 pounds. So I'd get $1.60 for this. However, there is sometimes copper wire. As you can see inside of here, um, there are two spools, okay? They look like copper. However, before I take this apart, I wanna check if this is copper or aluminum. So I do the scratch test. What I do is I take a file, I will rub it, um, and as you can see, unfortunately, there was right there the metallic look, so this is aluminum. I've done the other side of the other one. As you can see, it is also aluminum. So unfortunately, the transformer that came out of here, the windings or the wire is aluminum. So I can't factor that into the experiment. Um, what I have done is, and I, cause I don't want to say that all newer models don't have aluminum or uh, copper because some of them will have one of these as copper. Um, a lot of them will have two that are aluminum, but again, you want to check before because even if one of these was copper, it is worth it. So what I've actually done just to help with this experiment, I have done a weight with both of these as aluminum and I've also factored in as if one of them was copper. Okay, so um, unfortunately this one was all aluminum, so I can't use that. Another place for aluminum is a motor. The fan motor, there is um, a spool that goes around the uh, motor. It's nice, clean copper. There's also some little tiny, tiny bits that I've taken off that connect, okay? So if I take those up to the camera, I've got little pieces like this 
that come off. So they're little pieces, very easy to do. I just cut them and then bend them. Okay, but there is the nice spool of copper that comes off of this. And I also want to answer another question. Someone might say, if you're new to the game, that looks like bare bright. Unfortunately, the rule is if copper wire is less than 16 gauge, um, and 16 gauge would be the thickness of a pencil lead, if it's lower than that, it would go as number two copper. Okay, so even though it looks shiny and bright, it's still number two. All right, so this was the motor. I got some weight here. I got on the circuit board, okay, which would be uh, another little transformer. That one did have copper, so I've taken that off. I had on the circuit board also two silver contact boxes. Inside of those, they have um, not only silver, but they have some copper spools. And I actually do have a couple videos on looking at silver contact boxes for the silver. Uh, definitely, I like to collect it and, and add it up, okay? On the circuit board here, there was a small spool of copper on, we call it like a little donut, so I call it a donut anyway. So it's a little spool like this that goes on the circuit board. I've taken the copper off of that. And this is borderline 16 gauge. I may be able to throw this into number one, but it's not very heavy, so I'm just gonna leave it as number two right now. Okay, I have a small motor on the bottom of the microwave that turns the plate. So another spool of copper that came out of that. And lastly, the magnetron. I just released a video on taking apart magnetrons. Um, great source of copper, one of these. However, you do have to be careful with these. So please, before you tackle one of these, Go check out my video, how to take a magnetron apart, because there could be beryllium on the ceramic strips. Okay, so please be very careful with that and go check that out. But inside the magnetron, there are two spools of copper in there, as well, the core. I can scratch that for you. This is a different one. And I can handle this because I have not cracked the ceramic, um, so it's okay to touch. But this core is copper, and when I cut that open, this is what appears. So here is the two spots. This is my nice piece of number two copper. As you can see in that, it is nice and shiny inside if I scratch it, but this is still number two. And I also factored in on, the, as well, there are two cables that come out of the top, okay? So out of there. As well, just because everything counts, I've even taken the brass prong, or sorry, the copper prongs that came off of the silver contact boxes, and I've weighed. So the grand total of all of this copper from this new model was uh, almost a half of a pound. So if I do the math for that, I would get for the copper here, $2.07, okay? Now, as I said, if one of these spools on the transformer was copper, so I weighed that and I weighed one of those ones, uh, that would bring me almost to uh, three quarters of a pound, which would give me $3.10. So again, before you um, just, you know, throw this into your transformer pile, I cannot stress enough, do the scratch test because I have found newer models that did have one copper coil at least, okay? So please, for your benefit to maximize your profit. But again, getting $1.60 for this isn't bad either. Okay? Now, for the older model, I have done the same experiment. All right? I have a lot of the same components. Okay? So I have my magnetron. There is my disc that I've taken out of there. As you can see, nice copper. I have a little transformer. Okay? Again, I've already taken the copper off, which is right there. I have a couple, the fan, oh, the fan that, you know, um, motor that I had, same thing, another one of these. Okay, there's the copper, okay. Um, the actual rotator, rotational fan. Oh, that's actually the transformer one. But again, another spool, I added in my little pieces from the little fan motor. 
Okay, the magnetron, as I said, had the two pieces of copper at the top. Okay, the silver contact box, I had two of these silver contact boxes as well. Um, I put it in one of these spools. Okay, and what I love, the big money maker, the transformer. As I scratched them, they were both copper. Okay, so as you can see, they, this one, I did the scratch test right there at the top. That is copper, and the scratch test I did somewhere on here. Um, right, where is it? That's okay. This is copper, I assure you. Uh, and actually, I'll just do a file because I don't want anyone saying, oh, you're fudging this, so here's my file. As you can see, there is the copper. Okay, so this right here alone, if I weighed it, which I'm gonna do for you right now, I have my scale, that alone weighs 1.85 pounds. Okay, so that is awesome, just right there. When I added up all of this copper, I got 2.009 pounds. So do the math. 2.009 pounds times $4.13. Just copper, number two copper from this microwave, I got $8.30. So, going almost $6 from this, $6.23 more of copper than this one, okay? If I did an experiment with one spool of copper in this transformer with $3.10, I'm still making $5.20 more on that one, okay? So, as you can see with that experiment, yes, there is a lot more copper recovery in the older models. Will I say that they're more dangerous? They are just as dangerous when it comes to a shock from the capacitor. However, as you get into the older models, there is more likely chance that these ceramic strips will carry beryllium. Okay. However, I treat all of them with the same safety cautions and, um, you know, want to make sure that my health is number one as well as yours because your health is not worth the $10 worth of scrap there. Okay. So hope you enjoyed that video. Hope you uh, comment down below, like, share, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. Tim Man out.